So all in all, this uh, rotor will have about 19 times the magnet uh, surface area compared to that one. Hey guys, it's been a while since my last video. That's because I've been working on something very exciting. Uh, people who've been watching this channel for longer know that I used to work a lot on pulse motors, specifically the Robert Adams Pulse Electric Motor Generator. I even gave a presentation about that at the Energy Science and Technology Conference last year. And um, after that, I kept working on it. I even tracked down through myheritage.com uh, one of uh, Robert Adams, the inventor's uh, last remaining uh, relatives. And um, I got in touch with his daughter actually. And she said she was gonna help out and, and, and try to help me get some under, unpublished information about his uh, devices or even one of his physical devices. But it all ended up uh, nowhere. Uh, she stopped responding and it was just a dead end and I got demotivated. I started working on uh, Tesla turbines for a while. Uh, I have some uh, stuff going on with that still in the background, but uh, I'll, I'll, I'll be able to show you that later. Uh, but for now, I um, watched some presentations uh, from Paul Babcock and Mike Clark at uh, this year's uh, Energy Science uh, Conference and they sort of like revived my interest in pulse motors and then I was browsing through Robert Adams original pictures of his machines and I found uh, this particular one so let's have a look um, first I didn't know what I was seeing in this picture but then I figured um, what he's doing is something very interesting so this um, I assume is uh, these are big neodymium magnets uh, very big custom made probably because they have even the rounding of the rotor in them um, so this wasn't a cheap rotor to manufacture and I believe in the back is a slab of soft iron he, uh, he used that material a lot and a dielectric in between with these magnets having opposing polarities now what why do I think that's the case um, because what you get uh, when you do this uh, is a closed magnetic loop um, so I'm gonna explain that a little bit more like he um, has a patent, a, a British patent actually, and in that he uh, has, uh, together with Harold Aspen, um, created a rotor design that um, does exactly this. It uses both sides of the of the magnet, and uh, where a lot of pulse motors, I would say over 95% of them, use only a single side of the magnet and waste half of the power the magnet has even though it still has a certain weight that you have to carry around that you only use half of the power uh, that the magnet um, uh, gives you the half of the force so this way would allow you to sort of like um, through the iron the a magnetic flux would be guided to the other side and you would sort of create like a horseshoe magnet now let me uh, show you a little bit what I mean so Assume this is a, a rotor magnet here at the top, north, uh, north and south, and you have your uh, one of your uh, motor coils. Now, this is how the average pulse motor is set up. Uh, however, uh, here in the back of the magnet and in the back of the coil, uh, that energy is not being used at all. It's, it's really just wasted. So what you could do is you could add another magnet on the other side and have these coils connect um, in series so you get sort of like a little horseshoe but still this will not guide any of the flux so this flux will still go into the into space or into your rotor center really and this will go into space in the back of these coils you still pay for this uh, flux though like you pay with current uh, the current that you put into this uh, coil sets up a magnetic field, but it creates a north and a south pole, but you're only using one of them and you're really wasting half of your energy. So that is, uh, a uh, you know, a shame because we're trying to make this super efficient machine that's sort of like... Um, yeah, we, we have to, if, if we're wasting 50% of the energy that's in the system that we are paying for, um, yeah, it's going to be very, very hard to achieve any of these, uh, um, these, 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 these over unity claims or whatever you want to call them. So 
one way to fix that is to place some iron strips because what they do is they guide the flux um, and especially if you set it up in an attraction mode in this case so a lot of pulse motors are repulsion that's what I've been using as well but once you have this set up where you can guide the magnetic flux so I'll show you like the flux lines will be about this they will go in a loop um, because it goes from north to south and then through the iron it will be guided to the north pole on the other side which is opposing a uh, south magnet in the rotor so you'll get this magnetic flux loop just like you'll have a current loop in a wire you can have a magnetic flux loop you can guide it by using uh, iron strips so now what um, this is what I believe Robert Adams was doing with that rotor I just showed you over here so let me show you what I came up with so far I tried to replicate exactly uh, this design so uh, let me show you what it looks like in real life now here is the little Adams motor I presented at the energy science and technology conference last year and this is the new rotor I'm working on just even just look at the difference between the shaft dimensions uh, that is eight millimeters this is 30 millimeters uh, the magnets are um, 50 by 50 millimeters and those were 20 by 20 so all in all also these have like four poles these uh, this one will have 12 so all in all this uh, rotor will have about 19 times the magnet uh, surface area compared to that one so that alone will make it quite powerful uh, I'm gonna use these uh, coils um, so uh, they'll be uh, in series with one of these metal plates or these not metal it's soft iron actually um, so in the back so like that that will be the drive coils and um, yeah so that uh, it, it looks a lot like the I tried to make it as uh, look as much like the one Robert Adams uh, designed as I could except I'm using ferrite magnet instead of humongous neodymium magnets because I don't want to you know kill myself with it these magnets are very scary these are just temporary bearings I have uh, but um, yeah I still have to assemble the whole thing I tried to make it as light as possible as well at least the construction materials so the center piece this piece is actually hollow as you can see um, and the other ones are printed with only 20% infill I 3d printed this um, so it, it's a very very light rotor for its size and of course the iron adds uh, adds weight to it but it's a functional weight um, so let me just show you what I mean with uh, guiding the flux so I have this uh, just two small neodymium magnets just to give you an example and this is some uh, silicon steel uh, transformer core look what happens when I they are all they're both facing with the same poles downward now so when I put it on this strip you see it sticks to it now what happens if I turn one of them around so now we have opposite poles facing down and facing up so now you see it doesn't stick at all now why is that it's because the flux is guided through here so there's no more flux going this way to attract uh, this iron you see it doesn't stick at all so the flux is guided and now you have sort of like a horseshoe and that's that's exactly what I'm doing here in the rotor so you have this there will be a spacer in between um, just like you see there and uh, that's how I'm gonna set this uh, whole thing up and uh, hopefully that's uh, gonna sh show some impressive results if you've seen any of my old videos you've seen that I was driving the motor with uh, an Arduino and a simple transistor now after watching Paul Babcock's presentation he sort of said like oh you're an idiot if you use those old transistors because there's currently a revolution going on with uh, MOSFETs like you should be using the, the newest ones, the silicon carbide or gallium nitride ones. They're much faster and uh, much lower um, 
uh, on resistance and those kind of things. They are better in every single way. So I started working on designing a circuit to do just that. He also said use 48 volts at least instead of 12 volts. So this circuit is able to handle 48 volts. It steps it down to 12 volts. It's um, powering a gate driver, a very fast gate driver that is then triggering this uh, gallium nitride um, FET. So um, that is pretty cool. It also uses silicon carbide diodes, which is so incredibly fast. Their data sheet doesn't even mention the switching speed anymore because you can hardly measure it anymore. That's how fast they are. So you're able to capture much more of the flyback than with uh, using a, a slower diode. Um, so yeah, I actually turned that into a PCB board with the help of someone on Fiverr. Um, it's actually performing reasonably well after I've been uh, tweaking it a little. Let me show you. I had to buy, uh, I, I, I bought this Picoscope um, to, to measure it, but it was only 10 megahertz capability and it just wasn't able to measure the, the fast switching speeds of this uh, of this gate driver and transistor or a MOSFET. So I had to upgrade to this 200 megahertz uh, picoscope and now I'm able to uh, to measure. And this is the the rise time down here of the gate driver uh, wave and it's 24 nanoseconds. Uh, it's pretty impressive already, to be honest, the 24 nanoseconds, but I've actually already redesigned the whole thing and um, already ordered an upgraded version because yeah, this Fiverr guy actually made quite a mess out of it. So uh, I've shortened all the connections, made the traces wider to lower the impedance even further, place components in uh, better locations. So I'm hoping, uh, also, also ordered some different uh, gate resistors that are non-inductive. So hopefully we can go even lower with the resistance. So, um, without uh, causing any ringing uh, by um, yeah, lowering the resistance and um, putting the, the gate driver closer to the, to, the f to the FET. So yeah, we'll see how that one performs. You can already, if you're interested, pre-order it uh, through the link in the description. Um, and because I'm gonna be making these available as well, uh, because they're very helpful because uh, how I set it up is you just attach your coils here, your flyback or uh, what you want to do with your flyback, you can just attach it there. Uh, so for example, a secondary charging battery or something, uh, the power goes in here um, and out comes, uh, or this yellow wire is for the signal. So it can be a hall sensor or whatever trigger mechanism you want to use. I'm, I'm going to be using an optical uh, trigger and uh, there's 5 volt and 12 volt coming out so you can use that 5 volt for example to power your hall sensor or whatever trigger system you're using so a uh, very helpful uh, board which uses state-of-the-art components and uh, yeah like i said i'm uh, making them available uh, through my website as well uh, so uh, stay tuned for an update video on that once i have the new boards uh, in so yeah a lot of uh, exciting stuff going on and uh I really uh, can't wait to put this uh, bad boy together. It will probably still take me a couple uh, weeks, if not months, but uh, I still have to design the whole casing and everything in the coil holders, but uh, we're getting somewhere.